Craig. How's it going? Doing well, thanks, Jared. How are you? I'm doing fine. I, I take it that you and I are supposed to be meeting right now to be talking about what's happening at St. John's on Halloween night. Yes, um, our All Hallows' Eve service, which features liturgical drag and trick-or-treating, that's family-friendly, is coming up on Halloween night at 5 o'clock, just as the sun is setting, where we get into that spooky, liminal space between this world and the next, uh, eternal time and our present time. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a little spooky. It's going to be very Halloween, and it's a great outreach uh, opportunity to our neighbors here in Cathedral Hill to come and trick-or-treat. And before trick-or-treating, come and experience these spooky stories, these theatrical retellings of the Witch of Endor story and um, the Archangel Michael defeating the forces of evil that we read about in the Book of Revelation. I want to get into that because you said uh, a word that we don't hear much in the church. You said it will be liturgical drag. And so liturgical meaning worship and drag meaning when people dress up in uh, ways that break down sort of gender stereotypes and all that, but sort of in a way to poke fun at how our culture is. So I know drag and I know liturgy and you said it's family friendly because I know Drag can sometimes be all kinds of out there. So this one will be for the kids and the adults. So what is liturgical drag? I mean, you and I put on dresses every week anyways uh, for church. Is it different than that? It's similar. I mean, Christians across time have been dressing up to retell stories from scripture or from sacred legend. And we're continuing in that tradition of donning garments that, yes, we take on a new identity when we put on these costumes to reenact these these sacred stories that are ever ancient and ever new. And it is family friendly. I mean, these these stories are a little campy, Um, but Max Bromberg Krauss, who is a fellow graduate of United Theological Seminary, a trained theatrical poet, playwright, Um, theologian, who's also a fabulous drag performer, um, is creating this children-friendly retelling of these two stories. So you mentioned that we have someone who's both theologically trained, but also a drag performer who's kind of putting this together with us. But you and I are not, in our daily lives, drag performers. This is sort of new territory for us, and we're being roped into uh, what I can only assume is a part that Max has imagined for us that will us out of our comfort zone and so in a way we're trying something new and and kind of going with the flow that's actually kind of how i'm seeing this night i I hope others will come and just give it a try see what see what's there like uh we have people who are inviting friends to come to church who've never come before they're giving it a try um it's a it's a night for courageous and uh theatrical adaptation and 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 going with the flow we never know what happens on halloween Exactly. Come into this in-between, uncharted space of liminality where the Holy Spirit will show up and she will do what she does best, which is surprise us with the Holy. Um, And I hope that many people come and enjoy this with us. I do too. And if that's not enough of a sell, I hear the rector has to also be uh, the devil in one of the plays. And so I'm not sure how I was conscripted into that. But again, going to go with it. And I hope to see you there. Craig, thank you for this conversation. And I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to Halloween evening. My pleasure, Jared. Yes. Uh